The Dylan Gabriel slander starts early. And I also want to talk about your comments on newcomers from the spring game. All that coming up here in just a minute. What is good, everybody? It's your boy Jay here with Unfair Sports, where we take a pensive approach to the sports conversation, talking some OU football today. And on this video, we got a few things to talk through. We got some Dylan Gabriel slander that'll come a little bit later. We're going to start off with talking about the newcomers that you all voted for in the community on uh, the spring game. And then also talking through some thoughts I had on the O line that I promised you all would give you. We'll start with that. If you want to look at the bottom, you'll see the timeline for this video. So you can go ahead and jump right to the part that you want to see. Or if you want to watch the entire video, we appreciate it. So hit the like button. Let us know that we're doing what we're supposed to do. That's the way YouTube knows that this video is an OU content that you want to see. Subscribe if you want to see more of it. And then share because, of course, sharing is caring. You can also follow us on social media. You'll see them for Spare Sports on Instagram as well as on Twitter where we post all of these videos. And we love to hear your comments. Starting a community on Twitter. I'm going to get that stuff put together a little bit later. But the community's there. If you want to join, you'll start seeing some content, exclusive videos, and all that jazz there as well as here in the OU community on YouTube. So appreciate you checking us out. Let's dive right in, shall we? First up, we're going to start with the fan votes, and this is all the votes that you all gave a couple weeks back on the spring games, about 12 days ago, wanted to know which newcomers stood out to you all the most, and so those are the two that I'm going to talk quickly about and get more of your opinions and thoughts. I love to hear from you all, the fans, love seeing the comments, love seeing what you all feel about going into the fall. We've got three, four, we got five months, four months before the season really gets going. And so well, the, technically three months. So we're, we're going to be seeing a whole bunch of just reviews, thoughts on players, maybe some comps, still working on my NIL video for you all to talk about some of the deals. I think that locally we should see with certain positions and all of that jazz. So Oklahoma, thank you for checking us out. If you all live in the Seminole County area, I know people that do, Praying for everybody there from the tornadoes. I was actually out in that area helping and doing some volunteering. Um, so I'm hoping everybody is safe and sound now after the storms we had this past week. So top vote getter on the offensive side of you all was Javante Barnes. And I totally get that. I am here for it. You all like what you saw out of him. I did as well. And to be honest, I think we're going to see a lot of him this season. I talked about this in the first video coming out of spring, but I kind of want to reemphasize that. With the way that I expect Eric Gray to be leveraged, a lot of you know, going out to the slot, doing a lot of receiving and catching, I see Barnes being a very critical role for this running game this year. As much as I love Marcus Major, I think Barnes may end up taking a lot of his snaps and going out there and showing out. A combination of him as well as Tywee Walker, he was one that jumped out to me the most. I felt like he was the biggest newcomer from that game. Statistically, he wasn't better. 13 carries, 55 yards, while Barnes had 17 carries for 60 yards. It just felt like the way the offense is going to go, I think Tywee feels like he has a little bit more of a ceiling than Barnes. I think Barnes has a higher floor. I think he's going to be good regardless of – what they do with him, he's going to be really good at it. I think Walker has a higher ceiling as a chance of being even better than our expectations. But at the same time, both of them are really good. The OU running back room is set. We should be fine, especially once we start adding the additional recruits here in the fall. So be excited about that. I do get why the Barnes piece, like I said, was is exciting to everybody. He looked really, really good. I mentioned it before. Felt like a DeMarco Murray type running back. He's from Vegas, got recruited by DeMarco Murray. It felt like seeing him again with with the size and the speed and the strength that he showed. We're going to have a lot of fun. And with the way Levy's offense is, the way they transition people in and out, we should see a lot of running back play. We And like I said, I think Barnes could end up taking a lot of snaps from Eric Gray, being closer to a primary back. And like I said, Gray's going to be leveraged for a lot of different stuff. Dude is so versatile. He's going to be a big enough deal 
doing everything and Barnes is going to be there, he may end up being the every down back that he is built for. So that's pretty exciting there. Defensively, the guy that jumped out to you all the most was, of course, new guy, Jaron Kanick. Kanick the mechanic. If you watch the game, look at red on defense, look for number seven. He was all over the place. Now, he only recorded one tackle, but dude was flying across the field. And that, to me, is going to be what's going to make him special coming in this team. And that's, I mean, I think that's the reason why Venables recruiting him out of Kansas to and in the state of Kansas to go out to Clemson. And then, and then Canick decided that, nah, I want to follow Venables because he's coming here. I want to play here. And it's a closer drive for him, too, and his family. So I think Canick is going to be a monster on the defensive side and grow and develop in something bigger. I'm going to give him about a year. This year, he looks like he has the instincts to just be where the ball is. He has that ball-hawking mentality. Like I said, if you watched spring games, to me, it felt like I saw number seven everywhere. It felt like he was just there in plays he was around he was getting to the spot and that's the one thing defensively Oklahoma has to be better at this year it did not feel like in years past with the old regime that the defenders were hawking the ball and there was a lot of people around it felt like there was a lot of open space and players like Kanick will definitely be those positions that those type of players that we're going to see a lot more from Venables that when we when you see a guy go down You'll see almost all 11 players there, but you'll at least see two or three, which is going to be a big deal. Good choice. Give me your thoughts on that. Any more insights you guys feel? Love to hear all of your opinions. on. So thoughts on the offensive line. This video is going to be a little bit longer. So I'm going to talk some things I felt like about the two new guys on the line that felt like they made the most impact and will be probably the bigger deals coming up. So you've got McKay Matower as well as Tyler Guyton coming in. I think we've got our, our starting left guard. The tower is definitely going to start. He's going to replace Marquise Hayes, who got drafted by the Arizona Cardinals and the three years of experience he's got on the right side. I feel like it's going to translate well on the left. Now in his recent media time, he media um, availability. He talked about the transition from left to right. From, from right to left is a is pretty difficult. It took takes about half a practice to figure out the proper footwork and placement to get it done. But I think what's going to help him the most is that when he played the right at Cal, he was protecting a right-handed quarterback, so he knew he can motion and move with him. Here at the left, on the left guard, he'll be doing that for a left-handed quarterback in Dylan Gabriel. That, to me, is going to be – that experience in knowing a quarterback is going to be moving around because it's college. Quarterbacks are going to be moving – that's going to help him immensely and make him really big, big asset on the left side of the field guarding. That to me is going to probably be the biggest piece. Three years of experience and doing that's going to be big. And so with him and then Tyler Guyton talked about him when he first got came in as a transfer from TCU. His athleticism is the thing that stood out. I mean, he's a big dude at six, seven, like two, four, three, forty. I'm sorry, three, forty. And doesn't look it. He carries it very well. He looks super athletic. He looks super strong. Raw talent. But that's okay. You want something like that. And so they played him most of the spring game. He played the uh, he started on the white at left tackle. I like that for him. That's a great starting point. I Especially with Dylan Gabriel being a lefty. Getting him out there. He'll get some game this year. Especially because of how high pace this offense is. We should see some some of him on the field. I think that that's going to help him to develop into the left tackle that they want. It gives us depth. I mean, it gives Oklahoma depth no matter what, but I think he's really going to develop into something special on the left side going forward. And because we'll see a little bit of him this year, we'll probably see a lot over the next couple of years as he develops his skills and stuff. And athleticism, the thing that jumped out to everybody at practice, her teammates talk about it in their media availability that that jumped out to them at that size. All we got to do is get the hands in, in the right place. And I think that the OU offensive line coaches has got this. They're going to put make him something special. So mark my words, he may end up being a, a, a day one or day two draft pick by the end of this. I can see it. The potential is there. The ceiling is super high. 
So super excited about the offensive line. Protection is going to be key. And like I said, him being on the left side, him as well as Matower on the left side for Dylan, it's going to be a great way for them to adjust. And you have the veterans on the right protecting the blind side. That's what you need. That's going to be big. Now, one of the main reasons why you all are here is the slander that Dylan Gabriel has already begun to get. Now, On3 Sports has put out a top 10 transfer quarterbacks for a 2022 list. Here's the list here. And you'll notice a name that's not there. Matter of fact, the guy with the most yards and touchdowns in the transfer portal this past year didn't make it. Burley made top 20. These are the next group of them. They put him down to 19th. And I'm going to post the link to the Twitter feed, uh, to the Twitter thread that everyone's on. You'll see the OU fans definitely had a few things to say to the on three team about the decision to leave Dylan Gabriel out. Now, let's talk about this real quick. I saw Clark Brooks with uh, SC StatCats part of on three sports. And this was his argument for it. He based it on these metrics. These are the metrics that he based it on. And as you can see, Dylan Gabriel, as all the quarterbacks has played most yards, most touchdowns, but statistically it looks like overall might not be the best. And this is what he's saying. He's saying he's worse out of the group who has experience. They expect him to put up numbers because of Levy's system, but dominate and be better than those guys. They don't expect. They're very high on Quinn Ewers. He's never played. He couldn't make it out at Ohio State, but he's at Texas. He's back home. Probably will start. There's no reason why he wouldn't. I think the thing that they're not considering is the talent discrepancy from UCF to Oklahoma. Now, no shade to UCF. I've seen some really good players come out of there and and be in the NFL, but OU has better talent. They always have better talent. And on top of that, Levy has evolved from the years that he was actually the OC at UCF. I mean, he went from UCF to Ole Miss, and now he's at Oklahoma. So it's been a couple years that he has been able to be underneath Lane Kiffin as well as Josh Heupel, former OU quarterback, and he's polished it. And then Dylan Gabriel's learned under multiple, a different set of coaches. Those mistakes and all the stuff that they have on there, he had. they said he had the most interceptable balls thrown out of everybody on that list. I don't think that's going to be that big of a deal on this team. He's going to have wide receivers that can adjust themselves. He's going to be putting the ball in certain places to where the wide receiver can get there. Sometimes interceptable balls that are thrown are because the wide receiver just can't get to the spot. I don't think he's going to run into that problem here at Oklahoma like he did possibly at UCF. Now, like I said, no shade to UCF. They put out some solid receivers that's gone pro and some solid receivers that's now in the transfer portal. There's a good chance that DB will have – a career year under Levy, barring injury, and with this new system and the new type of weapons that he has. Now, looking at that as well as the experience piece to me is a big deal. Three years playing, 8,000 yards, 70 touchdowns. The closest one to him was Bo Nix, 7,200 yards, 39 touchdowns, and he was at Auburn. We saw what Bo Nix could do. I think Bo Nix is okay. I think Dylan Gabriel is built different built better at quarter as a quarterback as an actual thrower I think he's better so Sooner fans we got bulletin board material we'll talk more about Dylan Gabriel later on throughout the summer you'll hear a lot everybody's gonna be talking about him everybody's creating content right now trying to decide what to talk about because we ain't got no real football to talk about for the most part so make sure you all remind the doubters remind Clark Brooks remind them every week when DB shows out in the fall that there's only one Oklahoma and the slander and disrespect will not be tolerated. We will show you out. We will show you what Oklahoma is made of. So with that, thanks for tuning in. I'll just be throwing random videos out over the next few weeks. Like I said, we are in the fall when the spring now, it's not much going on. We'll talk about transfer portals. There's going to be a lot of big movement over the next few weeks as the guys that have entered the transfer portal are now eligible to, they're going to be probably picking their spots. Oh, you had a few visits this week, the past weekend. And we'll, we'll beef up the roster 
going into the fall. So with that, check out, look for those videos. If you want to hear me talk about other sports, we do all, I put all my videos there on our Instagram account because I love just talking sports in general. Also follow us on Twitter at unfair sports and Instagram at unfair underscore sports. And with that, chop it up with y'all in a few days. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you.